and you know each and every one of us in particular, and know us ourselves, as well as knowing all about us, and thank you according, it is according to as you know us, that you cause your word to come to us. And we do pray that should there be any amongst us who do not know you, that you will quicken your word to their heart in a special way, in order that they may be quickened by the Holy Spirit and come indeed to know you as their Saviour. And so we lift up our hearts to you and give you our thanks now. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. in his name. Amen. 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 <coughs> Amen. Amen. And now then we shall turn for our text to Psalm 68 and verse 11. <coughs> it's in the psalm that is the, was our, the psalm set for this particular day of the month that we have our text. In Psalm 68 and in verse 11, and the reading of verse 11 says this, the Lord gave the word, great was the company of those that published it. The Lord gave the word, great was the company of those that published it. And um, if we notice now, as we have that verse before us, that the word was and the word it is in italics. We are rightly told that um, when we come to these words uh, in the authorized version of scripture and indeed in any other version that prints them in italics, that they are there to convey the sense of the original language, which without those two particular words, it wouldn't be of um, a real meaning to us. And sometimes uh, that rule that um, is given us concerning that, and we are told that this was the reason why there are uh, italics in this version of the scripture that we used this morning. We are told it was this because those who translated the scriptures wanted to be honest in every sense. And when they put a word in that was of themselves, then they clearly indicated it. And that is a, a, a great comfort to those of us who believe, because it enables us to know what indeed is translated, yes, and what is put in in that sense. There may be one or two places where the italics are better left out, and uh, but not the, uh, those are very, very few places indeed. And I say this this morning so that we might really come to that place where we put our trust in every word because every word that is given us is of God. And you know, we have been given the Holy Spirit. Those who believe has been given the Holy Spirit. And he, one of his titles, one of the things that Jesus says of him, that he is the Spirit of truth. And he leads and guides us into all the truth. And this is a most certain thing. And I should say a comfortable thing comfortable in the sense that the Holy Spirit comes alongside us and leads and guides us and as we put our trust in God he leads us, the spirit of truth leads us into all the truth particularly all the, all, all the truth completely and he is the one who comes to reveal to us 
the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man one comes unto the Father but through me. And so we do not trust in any man this morning. Thank God that he's given us all the responsibility of preaching the gospel, of witnessing a true confession of faith concerning the Lord Jesus. But we do not trust what is said because of who says it. We trust it because the word comes from God and he has given us the Holy Spirit to cause that word to be come in our hearts, to be laid in our hearts so that we might believe upon him. If I may just say one thing more about the Lord, about the Holy Spirit, it's this, that Jesus says that when he is come, he will convict or convince the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And then Jesus starts by this, of sin, because they believe not on me. And, you know, people can be convicted of all sorts and every kind of sin, every sort of sin. But there's one particular sin, and that is the sin of not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, not having realized who he is that he came to this world to die on the cross for us, to not commit ourselves to him, because he is the only one. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but by me. And you know, all these introductory words, I trust that we will see them as, 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 as one seeks to, to look into this scripture this morning. I trust that we'll see it. Indeed, it is the essential part of the message. And the first declaration here is that the Lord gave the word. The Lord gave the word. The Lord gave the word. And you see, in that it is a word that is given, the very giving of that word is a gift. A gift is given. If I gave you a gift, if I have a gift to give to you, then indeed it's a gift. I don't ask you to pay me for it. I don't ask you to, to earn it. I, I don't give you a gift. Uh, you know, um, I don't give you a gift because you might have given me a gift. And I don't give you a gift in order that uh, one day perhaps I might have a gift back from yourself. If that is so, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not in that sense then a real gift. A real true gift is this, is given something from the giver. And it says here, the Lord gave the word. I, I do use um, a version of the scripture to, to help me a little. Uh, uh, the understanding of the Hebrew text that I might have, I have because I can look into a concordance and find the word there. Um, perhaps uh, I can think then of one or two things that I might know a little of the grammar. And then I do find this, that there is a, um, a, 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 con, a, a translation of the Holy Scriptures. It was the first language that the Holy Scriptures of the Old Testament was translated into. It's called the Septuagint. It's the Greek language. It was primarily translated thus because you see there came about not just a generation but many generations of people who had been scattered out into uh, the then known part of the world particularly in the place where there was trade and commerce 
And in time, many, if not most of them, had lost their mother tongue and the understanding of it. And then there was a translation made so that they might understand the language of the marketplace. If I was preaching in Clarkenwell uh, to the people where I ministered for a while, I would tell them it's the, it's the language of, uh, of, of, of Exmouth Market because that's where they go to that little street. If I was preaching down near Camberwell, I would be telling them it's of East Street Market. And of course, we were only a few um, uh, minutes, five minutes walk, and then to two minutes from Smithfield Market. But we the language of the marketplace, because you see, invariably they were almost all engaged in some way or another in commerce, and it was the common language of the common people. And the Lord has seen to it in his providence and grace that a message has been from him, his holy word, has been translated for us in the common language of the marketplace. It is said of William Tyndale that he had this burden of his heart to translate the holy scriptures so that every ploughboy in the land, the one who followed plough, might be able to read and know and understand the words of Holy Scripture, and in understanding them come to him of whom the Scriptures preach and teach and reveal the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And if there's an exhortation that is coming to us today, it's this, to seek the Lord and the place to begin to seek him indeed, and the only place to seek him in order to follow him is to seek him in the Holy Scriptures and finding him we will find life through him because that's the purpose why Jesus came. We are thinking of Christmas that's soon to be upon us. But Jesus coming the first time into this world in order to save sinners. Now then, we are told here the Lord gave the word. If I look into that text of scripture I was telling you about, then it speaks of a spoken word. A spoken word. The Lord gave the word. The Lord And we can see what, from what, what follows. It's a word of good news. Good. We think of the um, thing that will be portrayed to us in many different ways. That's when we sing. We sing about the glad tidings of great joy. Glad tidings. Gladness. Glad in that uh, text there. In, in the words of that uh, Christmas carol. That way. The thing is this. It's good tidings of great joy. We will come this evening to consider a text concerning good tidings of great joy. It's good tidings because you see what God gives. He can only give one thing and that is what is good. And in the letter to the Romans, Paul tells us what is the reason of God being good. What is God's reason? What, what, why does God always, why is God always good? Because it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. That's why God is good. In order that he might realize his goodness to us, in order that we might repent, in order that we might have a change of heart and mind and attitude, and repentance is all concerning the will. To have a change of will. And the only way that a change of will can come about 
is by realizing why God is good to us. To cause us to turn, to cause us from going a way that is away from God, to cause us to turn about, and about turn, and to walk in the opposite direction. Instead of walking now according to all the natural desires which is away from God, to turn. To God. Now that's only a part of it, the first step. From then on to walk with God and know with a great assurance it's not so much walking with Him, but He walking with us. We could use the term hand to hand with us. But, oh, beloved, there's a thought this morning which comes, which is better than hand to hand, and that is heart to heart. And when we are walking heart to heart with God, heart to heart with the Lord Jesus, day by day, because he's promised to those who believe, I will never leave you nor forsake you, to walk with him. And when we consider the world gained for age, whenever we think of earth in his eternal being, we find that if you were to ask the Lord gave the world, yes, there was a moment in time when he gave the word but the holy scriptures teach us indeed that there was we, we've got to use the word time because it's only in terms of time that you and I can understand things right but if I could put it like this it may be in one sense theologically speaking not a contradiction but uh, you see before before time began God was already with or at least God already had in his heart the attitude of giving and if he had the attitude of giving he had the attitude of giving because of whom and of what he was going to give and he was not just going to give something he was going to give someone. And that was indeed his only begotten son, the eternal Lord Jesus who was, who was with him, the eternal son of God. And he gave the word of the message concerning him who he had given in that sense in eternity before time began. Yes, we will remember now when the word of God comes, the word being made flesh and dwelling amongst us, but there's that giving. And here we are speaking of Old Testament times. Nevertheless, the Lord gave the word. And that is, that is behind the giving. Not deciding in time, well, now then, I'm going to give. But God the attitude of giving from all eternity and the Lord Jesus willing to be the gift that God would give because it's only by the giving of this gift of the Lord Jesus that anyone ever can ever can be saved without him we cannot be saved and so it says here the Lord gave and he spoke out a message concerning one who was coming. The Lord gave the word. And then we are told this. Great was the company of those that published it. And we usually think of this greatness here 
of the greatness of the vastness of the company. And whilst that is so, we cannot deny it. It's part of the meaning, but only part of the meaning. Because great was the company of those that published it. And if I were to look as I understand in that particular text more clearly, the greatness is not so much upon, at least it is great concerning the company, but you've got to ask yourself, well now then, what has made the company so great? What has made the company so numerous for, for a start, right? And that is because of the power that was in that word. The word came with authority because God had spoken it, but the word had come with power because there was an ability in that word to change the hearts of those and to change those who were, were the great company that published this word, that spoke out this word, that had seen to it that this word was going to be carried on. And the word great, the, the, the word the, the, from dynamis is, happens to be in that text. And it, 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 at least as I see it, and as I seek to mm -hmm. proclaim it this morning, the, the greatness comes upon the very fact of the, the, the people were a great company because they did this with great power. And then when I notice then about this company that published it is this, this, this speaking, this moving on, the, the particular tense that is given there is a present continuous tense. And our brother, uh, the pastor here will understand that in, in English, uh, or at least, yes, in English, we have um, um, an active voice and we have a passive voice. And then we find that in Greek, at least there's a middle voice. And this is in the middle voice, yeah? And the thing is this, beloved, if, if, I, if, I, in, if I interpret that right now, it's this that it speaks to me, is this, that you see, this word came to a people. And then these people, in acting upon it to pass it on, they were the ones who concerted the action because they received this, they saw it like this, and it was so that they received it as good news. And the good news done a good work in them. And then it was not only that they were changed, that they had a good will in their heart toward God, they found out of that good will that there was an overflowingness. And they had good will to others. And so they continued the speaking, the giving of this word truly out of the goodness of their hearts because the goodness of their hearts was not a goodness that was of themselves. It was a goodness that was in there because of God. And it had come into them because the goodness was in the heart of God in the first place. It had come unto them and they were so motivated that they did something about it. And they published it. And beloved, it is, it is the greatness of this whole work and working that is the, the part and part of the meaning in this. And it didn't so much that I got a bee in my bonnet about it, but I, 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 I really sense that when it comes like this, you see, beloved, <laughs> they, they weren't exalted unto, unto to evangelization. 
They weren't exhorted to go from this being compelled from without. They were compelled from within. Compelled from within. When we come to the New Testament and his teaching, and his teaching to believers, we have, oh, there are umpteen places that we could go to, to speak of this, this, this compelling from within, this constraining from within, this, 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 this movement from within to, to give out and to give love. My beloved, that is why that is why Christian people today, true Christian people, those who know and love the Lord Jesus, and those, therefore, who have a love for others, even their enemies, witness a good confession of faith. And we are told great was the company that published it. We think of publishing today as someone who publishes their work in print. And that's if you think of publishing today and go look it up and then you know that's the, you know people people who publish books. Publishing, yes. Beloved, it's it's the speaking, and of course the Christian message is not only speaking. Because these people were changed within themselves by God through His working and Spirit and grace, they would change people, and their lives were such that because they were changed people and people could realize and see the change, even if they didn't notice the change before they realized, these people have come and there's something different about them and therefore they are coming with this message I've never heard before. And it is the change and difference being witnessed to by the Holy Spirit that brings this word through again so that something of its power in the sense of ability comes. And perhaps sometimes it's really, really inexplainable how that these things working together brings about a work that is the I was gonna say mystery, perhaps I'd better say enigma, this work that is so great. I cannot tell you today how uh, of, the, of, 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 of the whole working of it, beloved, but I can tell you that it is most sure. And it's most sure because I first of all saw it in someone else, even though I was a religious person. I saw it in someone else, and when I saw it in someone else, I can say in the right sense of being jealous, I was jealous for the peace that that dear woman had, which I knew that I didn't have, and which I wanted. And it was because of that, that four months later, I actually saw that dear lady first on a Christmas day, and she was going to get married a fortnight, about uh, 10 days later, uh, uh, soon after Christmas when the, the calendar in that year uh, was, was, was right on a Saturday for her to get married after Christmas. I was invited to the wedding and I found my place there as a name. They knew my name was Bevan who started with a B. They didn't even, the deal. lady didn't even know it in that sense. And it was Mr. Blank, and Mr. Blank was there, and as soon as I saw Mr. Blank, I knew that it was me. It happened to be the last seat. If you think of tables down there and there and up there, the last seat down here. And I tell you what, I was in a company of people on this side that I didn't, I belonged to them, but I didn't want to be with them. I wanted to be over there with that company on that side. 
I was on this side. And I, I, I belonged to them, but I knew that I really wanted a, a shift of table, as it were, over there. And on the 24th of October, the Wednesday evening, I, 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 I just happened to be able to put a date and a time on it, you know, but that's not the essential thing. I realized that there was this change. And it was a change because I realized that Jesus, who had come to bring the good news, died for me on the cross of Calvary. And I was able to have that peace in my heart through believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, now then, the time has come for the end of our message this morning. I trust that the Lord will have spoken to our hearts and something of the goodness of God will have entered to us today. Amen. 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 Now then. I can't get by. I'm trying to get by. I'm trying to listen. <coughs> okay. Well, now then. I wonder if we can open our hymn books now to 305. What? And we're going to sing about God's Word again. We're going to sing about God's Word today. 305. Lord, thy word abideth, and our footsteps guideth, who its truth shall be